Outkick host and Fox News contributor Tommy Lauren, and the host of the Richard Fowler Show and Fox News contributor Richard Fowler. Tommy, let me start with you. The president uh, denounced his opponents, many of them anyway, at least, as enemies of democracy and enemies of the Constitution. Uh, is this the kind of thing a president should be doing? Absolutely not, but I will tell you this. I woke up today a very proud ultra-mega Republican, and I yes, think that there are... I think he are... definitely had you in mind when he was speaking. Oh, answer, there are it? millions of Americans who are busting out that Make America Great Again hat today, and they maybe had it in the closet for a while. They're busting it back out. If he intended to garner support with this speech from Democrats, from Republicans who aren't mega Republicans, oh boy, did this backfire. Any moderate Democrat that looks of this says, wow, this was really tone deaf. This was really uh, beyond the pale. But also to the Republicans out there that said, you know what, maybe Donald Trump isn't our guy anymore. Maybe we want to go more the way of a Ron DeSantis or somebody a little bit more moderate, somebody that, that isn't so larger than life. Oh, boy. Now they're back mega and they are more mega than ever. Whether that helps us or hurts us, I don't know. But, but he fired people up. He does have a point, doesn't he, though, the president, while giving one little point, that like rejecting the results of an election, saying there was a fraud when you don't really have any evidence of it and refusing to accept it and making American politics entirely about the supposed fraud of the 2020 election and you know that's that's that is a bit of a threat to the the, the whole way in which the country we accept election results we don't like them we get on with them but we accept them Donald Trump won't do that will he he's not just talking about Donald Trump he talked about mega Republicans. If he would have just done that speech and said, you know what, Donald Trump has to stop denying election results, then maybe we could have given him a little tiny itty bit of credit. No, no, no. He went after Donald Trump supporters and yeah. said, we are a threat to democracy. Let's also not forget that Hillary Clinton and the Democrat Party would not accept the election results of 2016. They spent Trump's entire term witch hunt after witch hunt after witch hunt spending our tax dollars on collusion fraud. So let's not be pointing fingers about that. Richard Fowler, uh, it, it, Tommy has a point, doesn't she, that, you know, Democrats have disputed elections in the past. Stacey Abrams, who's still trying to be the next governor of uh, Georgia, still insists that she is the real governor of Georgia, that she won the election last time. This presidential approach of, like, damning your opponents as, you know, as enemies of democracy, how is that going to bring the country together? I think if you listen to the president's speech very clearly that he gave uh, this week, he made, he gives, he gives, he defines what ultra MAGA means, right? He talks about those folks who deny elections. He talks about those folks who called the people who invaded the Capitol on January 6th patriots. So in the definitions, he tells you who ultra MAGA is. And then he goes further in that speech by talking about the delineation between those folks and traditional Republicans. And I think in that definition, what the White House wants you to believe is they want you to believe that there's a delineation between those who belong to the ultra MAGA and those who are actual Republicans. I'm not saying that that's a winner or a loser. I'm saying what the White House is trying to do here is make some clear, bright lines between what is and what isn't. And I think that's really important to understand from, from the president. And let me go further. I think to bring Hillary Clinton in here, I think that's a little bit of a misnomer, because there, no there was not an invasion of the Capitol. And there wasn't a people, yes, protested and said, we're going to object this on the floor, but there wasn't an invasion at Capitol. Hillary Clinton conceded the election. Barack Obama invited Donald Trump to the White House. There was a peaceful transfer of power. That's not what we saw um, when Donald Trump decided did not turn over the, the keys to, to Joe Biden. It was very sure. messy, etc. So I think there's a clear delineation between those two things. Uh, Tommy, just briefly, because we've got to take a break, but um, the former, president, former President Trump did say this week that he would pardon um, many of those who were involved in the January the 6th riot. So that's a pretty remarkable thing to do, isn't it? Listen, there's a lot that happened on January 6th that we still don't know because those hearings were a farce. So what I believe our former president meant is there were people there, there that were swept up in all this that had nothing to do with anything illegal, had nothing to do with the atrocities that we saw that, quite frankly, astounded and disgusted me. He's not talking about those individuals. He's talking about those that were swept up in the madness. And there were a lot of people there that day that had no intention of being there to do anything violent whatsoever, and they were also appalled. Okay.